There's one thing better than dead games, and that's free dead games. Alright, Fairfang might be the best player I've ever seen. <laughs> Today we're going to explore some free-to-play games that you've probably never heard of and almost definitely haven't played. Okay. Fortress Forever is one of the more well-known source mods, but nowadays, the community is pretty tight. So to get a good feel of the game, I called everyone out in my Discord and we pretty much instantly filled a lobby. 18 people, holy sh**. Okay, we are actually filling it up. Hopefully this works. Bro, uh, there is an error message and it's not on my screen. Obviously, it didn't take long for some regulars to realize some sh** was going on, so within 10 or so minutes we had some OGs trying to teach us the game, or at least asking if we took the tutorial first. Clearly, I don't think a single one of us did do the tutorial, and apart from the few that had played some similar games, we were utterly f***ing clueless. We went through a bunch of maps, all trying different classes and occasionally crashing because of some bugged maps. Sadly though, thanks to my British genius, the clips looked like this, and sounded like this. Yep. Yep, yep. But that aside, pretty much all of us were actually impressed with the quality of FF and the depth of it. But the player count kind of surprised me until I realized when FF was released. In 2007, when everybody was busy waiting for TF2 to release, people got a little bit impatient. And that actually led to Fortress Rever being created. You're here for that ritual. Yeah. Recent years have been seeing renegades, sportsmen, eccentric hunters, and lunatics coming to Dust Bowl Valley for the blood sport. Naturally, even though FF was a solid mod besides some technical issues, TF2 kind of pushed it aside when it did eventually release, and people slowly moved on to what they were actually waiting for. But throughout the years, there's been hundreds of people who stuck by FF, or joined into it later on, and I got to speak to some of them, after we ran a shitfest through their servers. I spoke a lot to one old player by the name of Soap, or Gumbuck. He said even though the community is pretty competitive in its roots, they'd always welcome new players, and recently paying for the servers has become a little bit of a struggle. I managed to speak to one server owner called Darthman who'd been struggling to pay his server bills recently and thanks to you guys, I was able to help him out for a few months. I'll also leave a link to his server website below in case you're also interested in helping him out. I'm pissed I couldn't show you the audio of our time playing, but the regulars were really helpful, and obviously probably a bit nervous that suddenly within a few seconds there were over 20 clueless people running around their servers with no real knowledge of the game. A couple days later I returned to the game, but there was only one other guy online, and we went in circles trying to beat this essentially impossible puzzle map. Wait, oh I get oh, it, I get it. Balls. Oh I'm sick of this. Humiliating <laughs> A box. Oh my, oh my god. god. So what do we do? Again, big thanks to the fellas over on the FF Discord. They were welcoming and managed to deal with us pretty well. If you want to try the game yourself, the link will be in the description as always. But remember to be respectful of the regulars and please play the tutorial. I really had no idea what was going on, but the game is sick and the regulars are legends. Before we move on, I want to quickly thank today's sponsor that made donating to game servers like Darthman's possible, ExpressVPN. A VPN allows me to teleport wherever I want in the world instantly, which lets me buy GTA Shark cards as a Canadian. For example, if you're an American and you bought a Megalodon Shark card, you'd have to pay $100. But if you go and use ExpressVPN to change your location to Canada, you'd end up saving yourself 27 buckaroos. So not only can you save money with ExpressVPN, but you can also get vital protection. That'll stop anyone from DDoSing your connection to kill you while you're lagged out on some old school RuneScape. That really is just the tip of the iceberg though when it comes to VPNs. Whether you want to queue up for some Valorant from all over the world at any time of the day, or just want to download some dead games off a dodgy website, you're likely in need of a VPN. To top it all off, the legends over at ExpressVPN have given us a very special offer in case you're still not certain. To get 3 months 3, simply scan the QR code on screen or head over to expressvpn.com slash right.
The other day I received a DM on Discord about a game called AVA Global. The guy told me about its history and what got me hooked was the people who started off on this game, or more importantly the CSGO pros and many others that used this game as a stepping stone. He's trying to work this spawn door, but their smoke down is definitely hard for him to scope through it. And KT Kin with the pick on Platinum R. Skadoo's gonna have to do some serious work here. He gets a nice peek on I to him. In the sight, takes out Kin. Sick 3k. He takes out Sizemink. He has the bomb. He doesn't know where he is. That's low HP. And Scad with the 4k. Pros like Skadoodle, Sabrosa, Surreal, and many others started out here on AVA. Sadly, today the game is pretty much dead in both NA and EU, but I did manage to find a lobby. Aha, uh -huh. see, uh, 25 people on EU. Which is the server I'm gonna go on. Oh my days. I have lost all hearing. Straight away you can tell the similarities between AVA and the likes of CSGO, but I definitely struggled a little bit, and pretty much all my teammates were older players, so I honorably used myself as a bit of a meat shield. Man, give me the C4. Give C4. Let me plant C4. There we go. Thank you. Now I must do good work with it. Alright, why is he put excellent in the chat? Since it was the most popular mode, all I really played was Demolition, which is very similar to CSGO. You know, you plant a bomb, the other team defuses it, or just whoever kills who first wins the round. Don't really know where I'm going here, but... That's where I'm going. Near the end, I could barely leave our spawn before my teammates managed to somehow kill the entire enemy team. Enemy troops eliminated. Charge set. My team's just too good. I've had zero kills. That can't be right. And before I knew it, we won seven rounds to zero. Operation success. Return to main base. Your efforts are commended. The golden days for AVA were definitely in and around 2011. And one of the older players who's been playing the game for over 15 years now told me about the reasons why AVA failed so astronomically and why the community is now so much smaller than it once was. After 2011, the then developers made things very pay to win, which obviously killed it. Recently, the game re-released onto Steam without that pay to win aspect, which was what I played. But NeoWiz clearly aren't doing much right because the community still shit on them every single day and over 50% of the reviews are just hate threads on the developers. Over the years, AVA has had about four different companies host their game. But the shit show of development aside, the competitive community is still there, no matter how small it might be. Soon, some of the dedicated regulars are also planning on hosting their own LAN in Germany, and that's a real testament to their loyalty. Even if the incapable developers can't get their shit together, the core game is still pretty quality, and it'll probably live on for a while. Neo Tokyo originally started as an Unreal Tournament 2004 mod, but since its release in 2009 and launch on Steam in 2014, it has become one of the more known and famous Source Engine mods. Neo Tokyo is a cyberpunk, Ghost in the Shell inspired FPS based around a one flag, capture the flag mode, with various weapons, different classes, and of course, the famous Source movement. Like a lot of these quieter games, the community is tight and hosts weekly games which I'll talk more about later. But this usually means that when games aren't being hosted, finding a full lobby is a bit of a hard task. So I called for some support. I told everyone in my Discord the plan, and after a while there were over 30 of us, mixed in with some OGs. 21 people. That is beautiful. Mariah Carey? What does that say? Mariah Carey has breached. Okay, this is a warm-up. Holy shit, there's so many of us. <laughs> if you ever want to take part in these Discord events where we all log on to dead games together in one voice channel, then use the link in the description of this video and I'll tag everyone when the time's right. But turns out throwing 30 clueless people at a game over 10 years old is f hilarious. And I honestly wish I could have shown you. Sadly, just like FF, the footage looked like this. 
and I also didn't record the game audio. All of which I found out about 40 hours after I finished the recording and when I was getting started on the editing. Thankfully, when I hopped on to get some more footage, thinking this time it'll be without people just exploring maps, I found one of the old players online, Kinoko. Oh, it's Kinoko. This is the person who's gonna help with my script. Kinoko was one of the OGs helping us out and managed to get some other old players online to the point where we had a 4v4 going with me just stuck in the middle, repeatedly dying. Hello, Rai. Hello, TS2. Over the past few months, I've gone through a lot of different small communities, but the people who still play Neo Tokyo are honestly the kindest f***ing legends I've ever met. When I discovered that I basically f***ed up all my recordings from the last four days, I genuinely didn't know what to do, but this motivated me. We spent an hour or so going around different maps, including one called Red Light. Hey, what about that red light map, Hello? huh? Hello? It's got to be Show me. I'm sure if you think hard enough, you'll probably imagine what this map is about and why the only thing you're seeing from it is this one blurred clip. Yeah, this looks fine to me. Yes. Oh, who made this? Uh, this is an official map. The, so this the developers made this or... Yep. Yes, yeah, come, 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 come. Over the past few days, I learned a lot of what Neo Tokyo is all about. And if it's piqued your interest, I'll leave the link to their Discord below so you can take part in their weekly games that take place every Friday. Or they have 5v5 pickups pretty much every evening. When it comes to exploring Neo Tokyo and learning how it works, I barely scratched the surface, and I'd highly recommend you look into it yourself. Because this game is far from dead. Beautiful game and one of the nicest communities I've ever seen. Be a wall hugs getting in the way. Just hug the wall and you Ugh. should be. I can't do it. Oh! There. Okay. Now right, do a go. walking crouch jump. Walk star crouch jump. Fuck. Back in 2018 to 2020, Battalion had a pretty healthy player base with highs of over 16,000 people. But today the number is pretty much constantly below 5. It took me about half an hour to find a server with more than just one person. It's mental how powerful this knife is by the way, watch this. There we go, he's got no idea I'm here. Surely he's not going to turn around. Mate. <laughs> Oh, it was the real person? No! It was the real person! It's so sad that the- wait, he left. Oh, well, I was about to say it's so sad that it's just me and this one guy, but... Okay, he's left. But the whole goal was to either kill each other or plant and defuse the bomb just like AVA. But in this new server, it was just me against two other people. Alright, who we got? Tomic, Leia, and Parno. They're, okay, they're both on the other team. Oh my f god, that's possible? Thankfully, I'm pretty sure the other guys were also new because the game ended up being tighter than it probably should have been. It's kind of nice, finally. It's kind of nice, finally having people in the game. Oh, Parno's on my team. That's beautiful. Oh, he's left the game. Oh, he switched to the other team. No. Oh. He's teabagging my body, isn't he? He's teabagging me. Oh. It's really weird walking around these maps with just a few bots, especially considering what this game could have been if it wasn't for the devs. I remember watching Eric Triceps first stream this game back when it was relatively new and everyone thought it was going to be the next big thing. Ooh, dude, I'm f***ing nuts. But a few years later, it's closer to shutting down altogether. The last post on the Battalion Reddit was a little while ago, and by that I mean over a year ago. That was around the same time the game went free to play and renamed to Battalion Legacy from the original Battalion 1944. It was basically a last ditch effort to get some players, and it clearly didn't work too great. The biggest changes alongside free to play were also no anti cheat, no ranked game mode, and lastly, no future updates. Basically, a big f yourself sprinkled in with some refunds. Oh, 
There's no way he sees me. Oh! Okay, the sound in this game is f***ed up. Hold, hold on. Hold on. After that final game I played, everyone else seemed to leave me and probably also uninstall the game, so that's what I did. There he is, little Tom. Little Tomothy. Fuck. <laughs> Let's f***ing go. That's how we do it, baby. That's how we do it. Rest in peace. Battlegrounds 3 is the third iteration in a series of war FPS games dating back over 21 years. When I was on, the game rarely had more than 10 people online and everyone seemed to be crammed into one server. I joined halfway through a game, so decided to just join the Brits and talk to people. Hey guys. Hello. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. That it. That mic is incredible. About 90% of the lobby is usually people with below 100 hours, but I found out pretty quickly that a few have probably been playing the game since release, and we're pretty f***ing good. How did you come up with that name? Yeah, it's my second name in the real life. Oh, it's- oh, your nickname. Nice. <laughs> When the maker speaks, you listen. It's a joke, but these is a great if it's true. Okay, this is this is not funny anymore. See. Do you understand Spanish, man? Uh, no. I know, I know, hola, no hablo espanol, and uh, donde esta la biblioteca. Nice vocabulary, man. Thank you, thank you. What's going on here? There's a naked man just ravaging their spawn. This is why this game... Yeah, I went to Spain once. I went to, uh, Mallorca. Mallorca is a good place. In high school, I learned a little bit about how to speak English, but I have learned more this last year by playing games. That's wholesome. Yeah, it's a good way to speak to people. Your English is already better than mine, man. Don't worry. The second map we played was probably my favorite because it features this cave thing. All you do when you're on the British side is close your eyes and hope for the best, and that usually works. Uh, yeah, in, in, the, in the way, on the, on the right. Oh. Hello, hello, I see you, I see you. What do you think of this game? Do you like it? Yes, um... It's a good game, but I think I play this game because my laptop is shit. If my laptop is not shit, normally I don't play this. CSGO, Minecraft, or F1. Uh, who's your favorite driver? Alonzo? Of course, my friend, of course. <laughs> okay, good. We were losing pretty much every round on this second map, though, and then the teams were balanced, and Cum and I were put on the American side. We then lost the next two rounds, and the game ended 3-3. Alright, Fairfang yeah. might be the best player I've ever seen. Man, can you suck the f*** up? GG boys. The third game finished quicker than it started, and by the fourth map, my kebab had arrived, so most of it was spent AFK. What do I call you, Cam? I don't understand, sorry. What's like, uh, what's your, what's your name? Uh, Ow. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is Antonio. Antonio? Yes. Sick, man. Sick. Okay. Cool. Push. Hello. Thanks. Hello, man. I have kebab. <laughs> you like kebab? Yeah, like so much. Yeah. By this point, the server had glitched out because every time my buddy come tried joining the team, he'd be kicked off. So eventually I called it there. Even though the number of regulars for this game is pretty low, you can log on at almost any time and actually find a server with people in it. And it's definitely one of the better old school war games I've tried. <laughs> 
I remember hearing about a game called Double Action Boogaloo back when Germa was going around different games. Wait, 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 don't shoot me, don't shoot me, that's you? Yes, I'm gonna jump me. in that window. <laughs> and even today, the game has barely changed. Even a lot of the servers are still there. And thankfully, I wasn't the only one online. Alright, four people in the game, that's actually quite a lot. Brother, <laughs> what the fuck is this game? Oh, oh! When I first logged on, I picked a random agent with no equipment and the first style that looked at me. Obviously, I eventually figured out that a gun would be handy and after that, I actually started doing some things. Now we do this dive thing. Okay. Brother, what the f is going on? Oh my. Nice. Oh! But apart from Boogaloo being your average source mod, there's one mechanic that makes this game amazing. The stun button. Essentially, at the click of a button, you can dash or jump between buildings or through windows and sometimes through people. I think getting kills while in midair or slow motion gives you style points, which in turn gives you actual points. But even after an hour of playing, I never really learned the optimal way to get points. I spent most of my time just going around spamming the stunt button and shooting rubber pellets with my shitty plastic shotgun. What the f is that noise? What the f is that noise? Okay, what is going on with my game? This this can't be right. F you. You too, man. Most fights are like your average P91v1 on short in a CSGO casual. And half the reviews talk about people being banned for getting to the top of the leaderboard. On Reddit, you can find posts practically begging people to play this game from over five years ago. And they say servers are usually active with 40 people at most times. Today, it's still not totally dead, but I never really saw more than 10 other people when I was playing, and half of them were usually bots. The last map I played was full of skyscrapers, the same map that Germa played in his original video back in 2016. What is this map? It's actually really cool. I'm guessing I'd die if I... Okay, yeah, that was f stupid, wasn't it? Okay. I... Combining that stunt button with my hands and gaps between each building made for a pretty rough time, and by the end, it was literally only me and one other guy left in the game. Good game. Good game. Remember, these games are all recommended by you, so if there's a game you want to see on this channel, then join my Discord and recommend it there, or DM my Twitter, which I'm probably more likely to see. A lot of shit went wrong with this video that you guys will probably never know about, but I'm pretty happy how it turned out. And again, thanks to everyone from these games who helped out massively. Subscribe, why not? Yeah, just, just do it.